Ailsa, I can't believe we're here. It's so exciting. 30 years ago, that was. I remember meeting Paula through Colin, who we used to work with, but we'd sit in the restaurant and have brilliant conversations. And she probably thought about those and then invited me to model for her. I don't know how that started for you. Yeah. How did it start? Uh, well, similarly, I yeah. think she probably, I mean, enjoyed the fact that we were with Colin so engaged with the paintings. Yes. But I also think she's probably quite drawn to us because we both had dark hair, believe it yes. or not. <laughs> and I think, you know, we probably fitted a kind of look that, yes. that she was already familiar with and, and, and incorporating into her work. So I think that might have been why she yes. sort of honed in on us. I remember modelling a number of times of going into the studio and we'd have lots of jokes but they were over coffee yeah. and when we were in the studio it was very concentrated and quite meditative and she'd been to the Slade School of Art and they had a very uh, strong emphasis on drawing. Yeah. And I can remember her charting my face like almost centimetre by yeah. centimetre with these very intensive drawings. Yeah. And then other times probably she'd do them a bit further away. But I posed, I think I posed just on a table like that, which was quite easy to hold for a long time. And she said to me, You've, you're very animated. Yeah. It's quite hard to pick, to find you in this quite, animated character oh. and then she did and it was very concentrated I don't know what she she transformed me anyway that's really interesting yeah. sort of recalling that because I, I remember I think the first time she wanted to use me as a model was was for the figure the seated figure yes. at the end there yeah, and she you. she so sort of had that in mind and so I was I was sitting for and mm. she did mention I think in relation to thinking about the the Virgin Mary and the you know Annunciation and obviously that sort of open opens up literally all yes. kinds of ideas and connections and she really did concentrate very much on me but as I was sort of standing up or walking she then said oh just stop because I think she was already evolving the idea yes. of what was going to go on in, in the middle. It was lovely being aware of that process, of her, her sort of thinking through and, and evolving those ideas. I loved what you said there, Elsa, about that idea of her catching you because you are a figure that has a strong role in mediating between us looking at the work and then these larger figures or these saintly figures or mythological figures behind you sort of allow us to connect and you are mobile through the work you appear in that panel as a reader this one as a type of you know looker yeah. and then that one very magically you're painting a snake yeah. which seems to have a lot of magical potential you've changed your energy up there i think you're a little bit dangerous there <laughs> but what i love about that with drawing us with yeah. such detail in these life drawing situations mm. Well, she's captured that embodiment. There's something very strong in that in Paula's work. Yeah. And in that central panel there, I love the way she's captured that idea of this lazy foot yeah. that sort of drags a bit. Yeah. And you feel the body almost from the inside, don't you? Mm. The Crivelli, it's got such weird scale shifts. Some big figures, some tiny figures, some deep perspective spaces, some weird flat surfaces. And when we're looking at this now, it's also quite psychedelic in that way. There's some deep spaces, large figures, small figures, and you can't fix, you can't relax, you can't think, oh, I know how to play in this work or how to read it. It's constantly moving around, quite dreamlike in that way, isn't it? So remember Crivelli's wonderful use of fabrics, I'm mm. sure that really appealed to Paula as well, because I mean, you can see her fascination and, and love of fabric and different patterns mm. and materials and the sort of, you know, flow of them. And it just made me wonder, did, did Paula ask you to wear something in mm. particular when you were modelling for her? No, I mean, obviously it's 30 years ago. It's quite a long time, but I do remember this well because they took photographs, the National Gallery at the time. Mm. So I was wearing just a very simple modern top, blue. Um, and my hair was bobbed. And then I'm wearing there like these non-specific clothes, like, you know, like a, a sort of robe of some sort. So yeah, the clothing wasn't important to her. I remember reading an article by Marina Warner, beautiful, well, it was an essay in a catalogue, and she talked about Paula using these non-specific clothing in the paintings, mm -hmm. that they don't belong to any time. They create that sort of 
she said, like a, like a sort of holding bay. Yeah. And like a weird limbo space of, of, of time. She didn't request that we no. wore anything sort of specific, mm. but, but I think the, the shoes are quite intriguing too, and the sort of feet and positions of the mm. feet. But it also reminded me when you were saying about how Paula obviously used us but as models but then turned us they weren't portraits you know she was actually using us as a kind of vehicle for her Paula Rago characters Definitely. and I think you know you said we turned into Paula Rago Definitely. figures which we we certainly have and I think that also ties in with that notion of you know this um thread of the th the three small figures that I posed for because I remember Paula telling or saying that she felt in some ways this figure was like her alter ego because oh. she it, it was very similar to her sort of reading about things but looking and being introduced yes. to things and then also the way she actually painted uh, on Drew you know she actually did like to kneel on the floor or sit on the floor. That's how do we feel about it now? I've always felt very emotional, very privileged. Thank you, Paula, for giving me that fantastic chance. And um, for many years, this was in the National Gallery restaurant. And I'm exhilarated that this painting has now been liberated. And I feel quite emotional because 30 years on, I probably won't make another 30 years. But my daughters might come in and have a look. Mm. And I'm always going to look like a girl which is really incredible. <laughs> so I'm very emotional about this experience. Looking at my much younger self, I, you know, I, I mean, it's exciting. It does bring back that really rather special time of, of her being the, so, the first associate right. artist of the National Gallery and, and yeah. a, a women engaging with you know, the, the masculine National Gallery sure. collection at that time and just how she's really made this project such a, a fantastic celebration if you like of, of women and we're a part of that. <laughs>